guess, um, playing quarterback in high school. What's, what, what sort of thing would you take from that and playing quarterback? Is there anything you can take? And how does that happen? Um, yeah, it's like, you get, I learned, cause you could, I know the coverage is for real. you have to know coverage to make play for it. So it makes the coverage easy for real. Um, what was it like, just kind of first chance to, to get out there? I know you played something last year, but, you know, in front of the crowd and get the game experience. It was fun, for real. I never, like, I always, like, dreamed about it, but, like, being really, I never, like, you know the feeling. It was fun. How'd you think, yeah, after looking six. at film and stuff, how'd you think you played? I think I played good. I got a lot of stuff to work. I think I played good. How did the switch overall go? I mean, yeah, going from wide receiver to just the defense, you know, did it help you going up against some of the guys you're not playing with? Uh, yeah, but like last year we had like COVID. We had a lot of people out, so like they asked me whether I have a problem with it. I was like, no, I was going to get on the field. So it was basically like that. So it started as a necessity, but now it's, you know, you couldn't see it going any other way. Yeah, I feel like, I probably, I don't know if I'll ever play offense again, but I say I love to play defense now. Well, how did the process of switching positions work? Did they just, like, permanently, I guess, when it, when it was a necessity, did they tell you, like, you know, did you be down to do this permanently? And you said, yeah, or did they just kind of say you were going to Um, basically, it was like, it was like, at first they needed me, like, they seen I was kind of good at it, so I just basically. What have you seen now that just looking at Kentucky so far? I don't know how much how much film you guys watch. Oh, I see they they got a good quarterback get on line. They got a good dynamic playmaker, so we, we all gotta be dialed in this week to stop it. How much different do they I mean, I don't even know if you were in the defensive meetings last year when you guys played them, but I mean they ran like, they barely threw the ball last year and now they I think they threw for four hundred on on, uh, on Saturday. Yeah, I think yeah, they just gotta do offensive coordinator, so they just they learned it. We just got to meet out there and the rank and pass it. Would you relied on, I guess, sort of learning position? I mean, it's sort of a newer, I guess, thing for you. And I never would have you sort of leaned on that for help. I, I, I lean on, like, everybody I can lean on. They better, like, help me. Yeah. I lean on everybody. Is there, is there anything universal about playing either a high school quarterback or wide receiver here or defense here that you use kind of overall? I, th I, I think I use all of them for real because, like, receiver is ball skills on defense. And part of it is just knowing where I have to be and what coaches are playing. Have you found a home with the defensive backs for your year? Oh, I'm pretty, yeah, I have uh, we all We all have a good relationship. We all love each other. When did you actually start going to this defensive meeting last year? It was probably South Carolina week, I think. That was the first meeting, the defensive meeting I went to. Did it, did it feel odd kind of just switching or is it just your routine or how did that go? It, it did feel odd because I remember I came out here and I went to the receivers because I had like basically forgot I was doing that. But now it's normal. Yeah, it's normal. Any other questions? Where do you think the unit goes collectively from here after we won for four months? I feel like we we going um, we just going to keep going up and getting better as a unit. There's a lot of things that we have to improve on as you guys are probably you know already commented about the game uh, this past week. Uh, definitely one of the things that we got to make sure that we show up is our run fits. We got to stop the run. Kentucky does a great job of running the football. I think Rodriguez had uh, probably 125 yards rushing last week. Uh, very dynamic football team. When you look at their offensive line, it's probably if not uh, one of the best, if not the best, one of the best in the uh, SEC. So uh, we got our hands full up front. You know, very massive. They come off the ball, do a great job, and they do a Outstanding job for us protecting the quarterback as well. Uh, on the outside, you look at their receivers, you know, Robinson transferred from Nebraska. Uh, the, the guy's phenomenal, you know, uh, can take the top off at any moment. And Ali, as we know uh, what he can do, and you know, he did it last year. So uh, it's a challenge for us, and uh, we're definitely uh, looking forward to it. You mentioned the, the rushing board in Kentucky. They've been on the quarterback to throw over 400 yards, I think, the other day. Uh, what, what does that dynamic add to their offense? Well, I, I think it's just exactly what you just said. They're balanced, you know. It creates a lot. And when you can run the ball and then also create the play action off of it, it makes them a very explosive offense. So we got to do a, a great job of trying to make these guys one-dimensional, which is number one, stopping the run first and making sure that we don't give up big shots over the top. Steve, I know there was a lot of talk last spring about playing a little less man and more zone. Did you, did you guys play 
more man than, than you planned on Saturday? I know Coach Stoops said he, he thought you were in it a lot. Uh, you know, when you look at the film, yes, we did, based off the uh, situation in the game, just really trying to create a little bit of pressure up front and uh, try to get out the quarterback, which I thought we did pretty good at times, and, uh, you know, ending up with a nine sack. So uh, we got to do a much better job for us getting pressure up front without, right, without blitzing all the time. So that's one of the key things that we're looking to do this week. Stepping up the front defense, easily fixable. Would you like to fix it over time during the game on Saturday when you got the second uh, half? Uh, I do. When you really look at it, it wasn't really like a lot of problem runs. You know, it was really one guy at one point in time not executing and doing their job. So we got to do a much better job of really being disciplined, still working on fundamentals and technique, and really just staying into our gaps. Marquez on Saturday said something. You created some sort of play like right on the fly, like on the ground or something like that. Like, what do you remember about that at all? And how much of those adjustments do you like to do in the, in the game? Well, I think at any time when, when, when you know exactly where they're going within the flow of the game, um, and there's something that you can try to you know create for your players or create a spark. Um, I knew they were doing something, and, and you know I just tried to fabricate something on the sideline to put guys in position, and we ended up getting a sack off of it, which um, which really helped us in the end in the fourth quarter. What impressed you the most about Chris Sabrum's training, I guess, on Saturday? Well, number one, you know, being an offensive guy, coming over here and having the first shot at playing defense and starting, I thought he performed well. You know, uh, the lights weren't too big for him, number one, and uh, I thought he did a good job in coverage. He made a great play down the sideline and breaking the arm, something that we teach and talk about all the time. So. He's only going to continue to get better. Our biggest thing as a team right now, most importantly, the defense, you know, is game one to game two. We got to make a major step in our improvements, and that's what we're looking to do this week. A couple new guys played well, Blaze and Caleb. Were you expecting those kind of performances from? Well, I was. I was hoping so. They had a great uh, training camp. They did some good things. So you never know until you get in the game exactly how it's going to go. So the way those guys stepped up and performed, I was excited about that. How much can you take from? matching up with Coach Cohen when you guys were both in the NFL? Well, I, you know, I'm sure he's probably looked at me just like I looked at him with the Rams, he looked at Cleveland and probably Carolina. So, uh, you know, different personnel, of course, but, you know, when you look at the scheme, a lot of carryover on both sides. Coach, Kentucky has two offensive tackles that are of NFL caliber, Darren Rosenthal and Darren Kennard. What's the plan to attack the guys? Well, I, I think number one is, Everything we do starts up front. We got to do a great job of controlling a lot of scrimmage. It's going to be a challenge for us. They do have two outstanding tackles. I think the whole offensive line is pretty good. You know, as I mentioned earlier, I think they're probably one of the best, if not the best, in the SEC. So we got to do a great job stopping the run and trying to get pressure on the quarterback. Sean Robinson came in and played that nickel spot uh, from time to time on Saturday. What, what kind of flexibility can, can he bring to that position? Uh, quite a bit, just because number one, he's big enough to be able to fit in the core and stop the run. Uh, he's fast enough to be able to play out in space. He's played safety, uh, and he has cover skills, so he gives us a lot of points to go there in that position. Did you were impressed with Wingo on Saturday. You got a lot of snaps for a freshman player. Personal I've been impressed with him, you know, since day one. Just really his approach and how he practiced. Uh, I always like to use the phrase, particularly when we talk about young guys, it's not too big for him. And he stepped up in the same way he played, it's the same way he practiced. So uh, I'm hoping he can continue to progress and get better each and every week. I guess what has impressed you the most about Chris over there um, in sort of his first full year playing on defense? His intensity and being able to play fast, um, I was just saying, it's, it's been inspiring to see how he's been able to, you know, evolve in his game. And I've seen him change direction, and it's crazy, you know what I mean? Uh, it's really inspiring me to continue to work on my game. Um, so I'm proud of my boy. He, he works so hard, he's selfless, um, does whatever the team needs. So. Yeah, so I'm just excited for him. Welcome to the uh, interception on Saturday. What did you see from the play, and when did you realize you had it? Yeah, you know, it was third down. Um, number 88 is their go-to guy, so I, I figured the quarterback was going to key in on getting the ball to him. Um, and he, you know, released outside, and I was just feeling the pressure. And as soon as he broke, you know, I felt like I was in a good position, so I looked back, saw the quarterback about to throw it, and just undercut it. And he had to do it behind him, so I caught it. I got it, you know. Got up, ran to the end zone. I didn't really know what to do with it at that moment, but I just ran to the end zone and felt the energy from the crowd, so it was lit. You said you had a celebration that you had planned, but did you yeah. get to do it or you forgot? You know, in the moment, I wasn't thinking about it. I probably got a flag for it anyway, so yeah, okay. it's a good thing I didn't do it. But, nah, I think next time I'm going to get an interception. Nah, I'm going to go to the sideline. I'm going to do a little dance for you. It's going to be good. I'm going to be ready. <laughs> Was that, wasn't, I think I remember that's your first college interception. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, was that everything you thought it would be? Yeah, yeah, I didn't think it was. Um, and really when it happened, I feel like 
you know, you get that weight off your shoulders, like, okay, I finally got them. And then now moving forward, I'm looking to do more, you know what I mean? So I'm just looking to put myself in position more often to do that, to help the team in whatever way I can. So Was that weighing on me? It was a little bit, you know. It, it's always in the back of your mind as a DB, you know, but you still got to play your game. Um, and I was just telling other people, you got to be able to visualize that type of, you know, success in, in the game. Um, and that's something I've really been working on this off season. Um, the visual, visualization aspect of the game, because, you know, anything in life you really want, you got to be able to see that, right? So that's really what I did and came to fruition. As an older guy, do you feel like you're like sort of taking on the leadership role of guys like Chris and other stuff? And like, what do you, if you have, like, what do you, what do you sort of like, kind of try to explain to them, and teach them about what you've been? Yeah, most definitely. I think the key uh, aspect that I bring is, you know, showing them what professionalism looks like. You know, um, you're never too young or to, to be a pro. Um, I think freshmen that have a pro mindset, right? So I just try to bring that to them if they don't already have that. Um, and they, they embrace it. But I feel like we're all taking on that challenge of playing like a pro and studying like a pro, um, no matter what the situation is. So that's the type of leadership I try to bring. Um, I feel like I've done decent job. On the team, do you think some pressure from Man, in terms of the DBs, um, I know DJ. I, I've had conversations with him. Um, it's about you know what does that look like, you know, as a young guy. Because I was told when I was a freshman, you know, never too young to be a leader at no age. So I try to feel that in him um, within our room and stuff like that. And I even talk like it don't matter who it is, whether it's a freshman or a walk on, like. Most of the guys I'm typically cool with, honestly, are walk-ons because they had a mindset like, you know, I'm going to go get it, right? So it's easy to have those type of conversations with them, too. So, yeah. You know, first game in the SEC, wearing the Z uniform, Matt Farrell, what did it feel like? Nah, it was amazing. Um, you know, before the game, you might have some hitters and stuff like that, but once the ball's kicked off, you know, you just locked in. You know what I'm saying? And then whenever you make a play, you hear the crowd, and it just excites you. It just motivates you even more. So. It was definitely lit. Uh, I loved, I loved the atmosphere, and I can't wait to, you know, be in that position again. You know, we talked a little bit about it already, but or we talked to Chris about it. But you know, this Kentucky offense brings a lot to the table. You yep. know, transfer quarterback who threw almost for 400 yards last week, yep. four touchdowns. A transfer in Wondell Robinson who can do a lot on the outside. What's the game plan from the quarterback standpoint? Yeah, just be physical. Um, you know, anybody who is whether it's fast or explosive offense got to be physical with them and slow them down. Um, so that's our mindset going in the end of the game, really. But um, I feel like if we establish physicality throughout the defense, we're going to be good, especially in the cornerback room. I feel like we're going to do that. So look for that.